This is another video based on my original five sound design tips video, so go watch that if you haven't already. But that said, in this video we're covering the other basic tool besides EQs, compressors. So fundamentally, a compressor is to dynamics what EQ is to frequency. To break that down a little bit more, let's talk about what exactly dynamics are. When you look at an audio waveform, you can see different peaks and valleys. Those shapes represent the louder and quieter parts of a sound. That's what we refer to as dynamics. More specifically, dynamics refers to the difference between the loudest and the quietest parts of a sound. You can look at this waveform where there is very little difference between the loud and soft parts, meaning it has limited dynamics. On the other hand, this waveform has very wide dynamics. So now, how does a compressor alter the dynamics of a sound? To explain that, let's look at this graph. On the horizontal scale, we have the input volume in decibels. On the vertical scale, we have the output volume. If you look at this line through the middle of the graph, you can see it represents a one-to-one -one ratio between the input and the output. Coincidentally enough, we have a control here called ratio. You can see that if I change the ratio to two-to-one, the line changes to represent that. Now the output of a sound will only be half as loud as the input. This compresses the sound, reducing the dynamics. The higher the ratio, the more you are compressing the sound. Now, that example I just showed you isn't how a compressor would generally be used. To understand that, we need to look at the other controls besides the ratio control. The first control is the threshold. The threshold controls how much of a waveform the compressor will change. For example, if I set this threshold to negative 12 dB, the compressor won't change any sounds quieter than negative 12 dB. It's only once the sounds pass that threshold that the compressor will start to compress the sound. The lower your threshold, the more you are compressing an audio signal. Our next control will get us into another important audio concept, loudness. Now the control we're going to look at is the makeup control, also called makeup gain. You can see that if I raise the makeup gain, the overall output of the sound becomes louder. This is important because when you compress a signal, you inherently make it quieter. By using the makeup gain, you can ensure that the loudest parts of a sound are still just as loud. However, by doing this, we are making the quieter parts of a signal louder as well. This increases the overall loudness of a sound. Loudness is a concept that explains how our ears actually hear sound. See, if a sound suddenly spikes to a certain level, that spike doesn't sound as loud to us as if a sound stays at that same level for an extended period of time. Increasing loudness is fundamentally what a compressor is designed to do. If you were to just turn up the volume of sound, eventually you would reach a point where you were clipping, which would distort the sound. A compressor reduces the loudest parts of a sound, allowing you to increase the overall loudness without clipping. Loudness is important because we want sounds to be loud enough to be heard. Taking music as an example, if a song has too much dynamics, the softer parts of the song will be difficult to hear. By reducing dynamics and increasing loudness, a song is easier to hear, especially in noisy environments like a car. That said, the balance between loudness and dynamics is just that, a balance. If a song doesn't have enough dynamics, it will start to wear your ears out as they get pounded with a steady stream of sound. When it comes to sound design, there are two main ways you can use a compressor. The first is on individual sound effects and dialogue, and the other is on your master mix. Using a compressor on individual tracks can help those tracks punch through the ambient noise. This is especially useful on dialogue, as well as on any sound effects you want to be very audible. The more compressed a sound is, the easier it will be to hear. Using a compressor on a master track can help balance out the loudness of your sound mix from scene to scene and even from moment to moment. Again, you want the softer parts of a mix to be audible, even in poor listening environments, but you don't want to wear a listener ears out with too much loudness. Typically, compression on the master track is done with a specialized compressor called a limiter, or sometimes a mastering limiter or brick wall limiter. You can see one here, and what you'll notice is unique about it is that it only has two controls, threshold and output. The output is the maximum peak the audio will reach, 
and the threshold is how compressed the signal will be. Other controls like makeup gain and ratio are handled internally. The lower the threshold, the more the limiter will increase the makeup gain to reach the output, therefore increasing the loudness. Another quick trick to throw in is that if you have a background track that you want to be less noticeable, such as ambient noise or music, you can heavily limit it, but set the output level very low. This will reduce sudden distracting changes in the sound and help it to disappear into the background. All right, so now that we've got a solid understanding of loudness, let's back up to our original compressor and talk about the last two main controls, and therefore our last dynamics concept. Those controls are the attack and release. Our attack and release controls fix a problem that compressors present. See, when an audio signal suddenly hits a limit, it causes distortion. This is more or less what happens when you clip a sound. Since compressors are creating a hard limit for sound, they can also introduce distortion. To solve this, compressors don't actually start to compress the signal the second it hits a threshold. Instead, they slowly clamp down over a period of time. Well, slowly might be a misnomer since it usually happens in less than 50 milliseconds. The same thing happens once a signal falls back below the threshold. Instead of immediately stopping the compression, a compressor slowly releases. The attack and release control how quickly that happens. So that brings up the question, why hasn't anyone just figured out the perfect attack and release times? Why does the user need to be able to change them? Well, that's because the attack and release can change the tone of a sound, which brings us into the last audio dynamics concept of this video. When we look at a small chunk of sound, we can usually break it down into four parts. The attack, the decay, the sustain, and the release. In fact, you can often find these as controls on synthesizers which produce sound. The attack happens as the sound builds up to its loudest point. Then the decay as the sound drops down from the loudest point, then the sustain as the sound stays at a certain level, and finally the release, which is the sound falling back to silence. Oftentimes a sound will not have a very visible sustain, so you can just think of it as the attack and the release, which coincidentally enough are the controls we're talking about, although the two don't refer to exactly the same thing. In between the attack and the release of a sound, you have the peak, or the transient as it's called in the audio world. If you have an attack on your compressor set faster than the time between the sound hitting your compressor's threshold and the transient, the sound of the transient will be reduced. If the attack is slower than that transient, the transient will not be compressed at all. This is particularly noticeable on percussion instruments. Take these two examples, the first with a fast attack and the second with a slow one. All right, so we've got the attack down. Now, how does the release change a sound? Well, once the release of a sound goes below the threshold, the compressor starts releasing. If the compressor's release is longer than the release of the sound, then the sound will fade away faster. If the release is shorter than that, you could get a pumping effect where you can actually hear the compressor releasing. Generally, you want the release of a compressor to be short enough that the pumping happens so quickly it can't be heard. So now we've got everything you need to understand about dynamics down, it's time to quickly cover a few more miscellaneous things related to compressors. The first is the knee controller on a compressor. You can see if I raise the knee, it smooths out the transition at the threshold. A higher knee means that if a sound is just above the threshold, the compressor will compress it more gently than whatever you have the ratio set to. The next thing is this meter you can see over on the right of the compressor. You'll see this quite frequently in compressors, and what it does is tell you how much a signal is being reduced by in decibels. The further the meter goes down, the more you are compressing a signal. Lastly is another type of compressor, which is fairly common in plugins that emulate vintage compressors. As you can see, as sounds get louder, they go further up this scale of numbers. The numbers on that scale are actually the ratio, so the louder a sound, the more aggressively it is compressed. Compressors like this are really great at evening out sounds, so they work great on vocals and dialogue. Raising the input will push the sound up the scale, increasing the compression. The output is just like the makeup gain on any other compressor. Anyway, that's it for this video. I know this is a fairly long video, and I quickly ran through a whole bunch of different topics, but hopefully this was useful to you and you learned some stuff about compressors. If you didn't learn everything, that's fine. Compressors, 
can be a somewhat complicated topic, and it really just takes playing around with them and doing and just mixing with them before you can really understand them on a practical level. But hopefully this video gave you a quick introduction and uh, gave you what you need to know to begin doing that uh, playing around and learning more hands-on. But anyway, that is it for this video. So if you like this video, hit that like button. If not, feel free to hit the dislike button. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button.